Good morning everyone. I hope you are well. It is Saturday the 6th of February at quarter past 8 and we're heading out to Asa. Yes, it's very early but we want to get there before it gets busy and to make sure that the shelves are relatively well stacked for decent dates because they were rubbish dates last week. So we thought we would get up and go early. We were planning to go even earlier than this but I had a bad night and Jack let me have a wee long line. So that's us, we've got our bags ready. We're ready, we're going to head off, so I'll see you in a wee while. Hello again, it's 10 to 12 and we're back from Asda. I've just filmed the shopping haul and put all the shopping away and I'm about to make breakfast or brunch at this time, which is similar to last week. It's the Malcolm Allen breakfast pack, but it's a smaller pack this time. It's not got the tatty scone or haggis in it, it's just square sausage, black pudding, fruit pudding and links. So I'm going to make that just now. You can maybe hear Jack hoovering in the background. We have got a BT engineer coming out this afternoon. No, it's not to finally get our fibre broadband in. Our, broad, our internet pack in completely over the last couple of days. Thursday morning, um, it basically, it comes on for five minutes and then goes off again. And the internet hub light keeps going orange. So we need an engineer to come out. So they're coming out this afternoon between two and four. So Jack's busy hoovering, getting everything organised for that. And I'm going to make the breakfast. So I will sort that and then come back to you in a wee while and let you know what happens with this BT engineer. Mm -hmm. Jack's off today but he's working tomorrow um, so yeah not really much planned for the rest of today other than housework and then chilling out for a wee while but I will come back to you soon. Is that comfy? Is it? You cuddling your sister. You're so cute. Hello again, it is ten past four, I'm going to get dinner started. The BT engineer guy has been and it wasn't good news. <laughs> There's nothing he can do, it's just our crap internet. But I'll tell you properly tomorrow. I'm so I'm going to make a Nando's takeaway tonight using the Peri Peri Bag and Bake Lemon and Herb. So that is tonight's dinner. I am going to get that sorted and I'll show you once it's made. Okay, so I've got the chicken in the bag, um, it's all seasoned and everything, and I wonder what the funny noise was. And I turned round and Molly was munching on a potato. Look at her! You're such a greedy girl, do you like it? Look! That's a raw potato. I had laid it out because it was, it had a wee bad bit on it and I was going to give it to Brooke to give to the crickets and things, to feed them for feeding Zana. And uh, yeah, look, Molly's decided that she's just going to munch on it, why not? Why not eat a raw potato, you fat, greedy dog? Surprise, it's not you, Willa. Look, she's loving it. Look at her. <laughs> You're not right, Molly. <laughs> right, so just coming on five o'clock and dinner is ready. So we've got a Nando's fake away. I've got our lemon and herb chicken, sweet potato fries, sweet corn. I know they do corn on the cob, but I have no teeth, so I can't eat corn on the cob and coleslaw. So there we go, and Nando's fake away. Abby's got the same, she's got red pepper instead of sweet corn or coleslaw, she doesn't like them. Um, and Jack had everything, including the red pepper. <laughs> Brooke has got pizza, she's already away with hers. So yeah, that's us, five o'clock, going to sit and eat dinner and then watch a telly. Not that the telly's up to much on a Saturday night now, does anybody like anything on Saturday night telly now? Anyway, I digress again. I'm going to go and eat this dinner and if anything else happens tonight I'll come back to you but if not I'll see you in the morning. Have a great Saturday night everyone. Good morning everyone. It is Sunday now and I'm feeling a little bit happier. I'm sorry I didn't have a chance to talk to you yesterday. It was a bit manic. It was one of those days that was I was on the go from the minute I got up. I think sleeping in didn't help because it meant that when we got back from Asda, I had so much more to do than I normally would. I still had the washing to sort and the dishwasher to empty as well as filming my haul and making breakfast and oh, it was crazy. Um, we were still actually doing housework when the BT guy appeared. He appeared at two o'clock on the dot. We were told between two and four and you know, he was here at two o'clock. Well, he was next to us at two o'clock and we got a phone call saying, I can't find you, which is normal. Um, but yeah, really, really impressed that he showed up on time. He was a lovely guy, just a young guy. 
and yeah he was really nice but also really apologetic because there was nothing he could do now basically from thursday morning as you know our internet's rubbish anyway it's so slow and on thursday morning it just cut off completely and the light on the hub went orange and then was flashing orange and I thought oh it's a bit strange and it kept doing that all day on Thursday now it wasn't too bad homeschooling wise because Abby was at school anyway so she was fine however Brooke missed two Google Meet um, meetings with her teacher and classmates and one of them was actually she was meant to be doing a presentation that she'd been working on all week um, so I felt really sorry for her that she had to miss out on that because basically the internet would come on maybe for five minutes if we were lucky and then just cut off again and the hub would go orange. So when I got up on Friday and it was still the same, I thought, right, I'm going to have to phone BT. This isn't the normal, just not working very well. There's something wrong. So I phoned BT and they did all the tests and said, right, we're going to have to get an engineer out. I thought, oh, here we go. But when she said that they would get one out yesterday, I was like, oh, that's quite good quite happy with that. So Friday was a nightmare because I had both girls here trying to homeschool. Neither of them could get on. But it was the last day before half term. So I thought, you know, there probably won't be that much work anyway. And what I did was anytime the internet was working for a minute or so, I got them to try and log on to see what work there was to try to, you know, sort of grab what it was they were to do and then try and do it offline which was not the best, shall we say, but we got through it. So when the guy came yesterday and said, look, it's just the fact that your internet is rubbish. There is nothing wrong with the hub, which is what I thought it was. <coughs> Rana, I'm going to have to go and give them their chicken wing or I'm not going to get peace. Hold on. Sorry, I've had to change position because Clyde stole my spot eating his chicken wing. Um, so yeah, when the guy said, look, it's just the fact that your internet is so rubbish, there's absolutely nothing I can do. And the poor guy, I have to say, he, he was genuinely apologetic. He wanted to help, but he just couldn't. So after he went away yesterday, to be honest, we were a bit deflated at the thought of this is going to be our internet now until whenever. The latest update is that the pole that we need for getting the fibre broadband is due to be installed on the 24th of February. Can't see it happening, but that's the latest update. Um, I eventually got a response from the Scottish Parliament. I emailed Nicola Sturgeon about four weeks ago now, three, four weeks ago, and eventually got a response basically saying your email has been forwarded to the relevant people and this is your case reference number. So that was about two weeks ago and I've not heard anything since. So they're about as much use as a chocolate fire guard. That's what I expected anyway, but we need to feel like we're doing something because you can't homeschool two kids with no internet. It's just, it, it's not practical. It doesn't happen. Anyway, so yeah, we were a bit fed up after that and we basically just sat and watched telly. And this morning I got up and thought, you know what, there's no point in feeling down about it because there is nothing you can do about it. If something's getting you down and there's something you can do to change it, then do it. If something's getting you down and there's nothing you can do to, about it, just live with it and learn to work around it. So that's what we're going to have to do. As I always say to Abby, suck it up, princess. You know, there's nothing we can do. Let's just... Let's just watch the dogs playing and sabotage my video. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that. So, I've not even been able to do much with my cricket this week because with homeschooling and um, then the internet being so bad, which is rubbish. I've got nothing to show you. Although... Um, because the internet was so bad, it gave me a chance to start working on a new diamond painting. So I'll show you that briefly. I got sent it by a company called Victoria's Moon. They gifted me it so that I can do a review for them. So I will show you that in a wee minute. And it also meant that because I couldn't watch all my favourite YouTubers, I watched the series The Drowning that had been on, was it Channel 5? I think it was on last week. Um, and that was actually quite good. It was nice to watch some Monday telly for a wee change, but I'm so behind in watching my vlogs again. The other thing that happened on Friday was Brooke went to the dentist. 
Now, they were due a check-up just at the beginning of the very first lockdown in March last year. So almost a year ago, they were due a check-up, but the dentist closed and we had never heard anything since. So they basically had said, look, any routine appointments, we'll get round to you. Just wait until you hear from us. But, hello. Ooh, I'm telling them, where were you on Friday? Dentist. Dentist. And what ended up happening? She got two teeth taken out. Yeah, so she'd had a, an abscess on her gum just leading up to when the the checkup was due. But and we said, oh, we'll wait and get it sorted at the checkup because it was literally like a week to go. But then the checkup didn't happen and the abscess went away anyway, so it was fine. But then it kept coming back and then going away. Sorry about the dogs barking. It's going to be one of those days. One night last week anyway, Brooke got up out of her bed and said, oh, that abscess is back and it's really sore. So I gave her paracetamol and thought, hopefully the dentist's semi-normal now. So I had phoned them and we managed to get an appointment for Friday afternoon. Now, Jack is off work on a Friday afternoon, so he very kindly offered to take Brooke to the, well, I kind of asked him to take Brooke to the dentist because it was right at the time when I liked to sort dinner and everything. So Brooke took, no, Jack took Brooke to the dentist and I said, basically, I think all they'll do is they'll give her some antibiotics and then once the abscess goes away, they might take a tooth out or something, but it will just be antibiotics today. The next thing I know, I got a text from Jack saying, two teeth out, and I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, no. Because the last couple of times Brooke had been there, she had been a, a little bit, not scared, but a bit nervous, hadn't you? No, I she didn't like getting work done, but when she was young, it didn't bother her at all. So I thought, oh, no, Jack's going to have to be dealing with a meltdown. I am not going to be popular because I asked him to take her. And I was dreading them coming back. And then they came back and I went, well, Brooke, how was it? And she went, fine. I went, what? Didn't you? She was so, so brave. She got about six jags to numb it and didn't flinch, apparently. She was really, really good. But what they had said was that she'd had like a, a crown type thing on one of them. And the one behind that, there was basically nothing left of it. So they said, look, we'll just take these two teeth out and hopefully that should stop the problem happening. And she was so brave. So Granny Annie has given her some money for being so brave and she's ordered herself a mouse for her laptop, haven't you? So that'll be coming tomorrow. Oh, yeah. So yeah, that's what happened on Friday as well. She's getting bare cosplay ears. And what have you already got from Amazon? Face paint. Face paint. Um, because I think the last couple of vlogs that I've done at the weekend, you've seen her with makeup on, but she was basically just using like proper makeup to do her whole face in cosplay style. Um, so she has been treated by Granny Annie again to some face paints and some little bear, like polar bear ears for her cosplay so yeah that's been that and the reason granny annie got her then was because she had bought abby i don't know if you've seen them they're all over social media just now i don't know she might actually let me see it she's still sleeping just now but i'll get her to um show you later it's like a little octopus and it's like a, a mood thing so one way out it's one color and smiling and the other way it's a different color and it's sad so it's basically like a mood ring, you know, how are you feeling? The octopus is sad, right, okay, I'll leave you alone. I don't want any teenage tantrums, I'll leave you alone. <laughs> or if the octopus is looking happy, you're like, yay, how are you, Abby? Let's chat, let's chat. <laughs> yeah, we're thinking about making Nutella cookies. My cousin posted on our fam, we've got a family chat group, um, a really, really easy, basic way of making Nutella cookies. So I think we might give that a go at some point today and we'll show you that. But just now I'm going to let It'll you see young. the diamond painting that I was talking about and then I'll either get on with some of that or I will try and get some stuff done with my Cricut. Right, let me show you. So here is what I've done of my diamond painting so far and I don't know if you can tell but that's a little dog's paw and there's another dog's paw. I'll show you the picture, what it's going to look like. It's a little Dalmatian playing with paint. Look at that, it's so cute. Um, but it's a big one, it's a 40 by 40 so I've got a long way to go with it but yeah I'm really enjoying doing it so far. I've not done diamond painting since Halloween so yeah I'm getting into it, I'm enjoying it. 
because I've had no internet. I have been missing playing with my cricket. Look, it's over there looking all dejected. <laughs> but I might see if I can get something done with that today if the internet's good enough. Right, so I'm going to head off just now and I'll come back to you in a wee while. I knew there was something else I was going to tell you. Yesterday, when we were coming back from Asda, um, there's a couple of different ways we can go, but one of the ways that I go a lot is coming back through Dumbarton. Now, the main road that we come through in Dumbarton has got a street where the trees on either side, for some reason, have got stuffed toys in them. And, I mean, it's been like that since we moved here nearly three years ago. And Abby has spoken to a lot of her friends who live in that area and none of them seem to know why they're there or who puts them there. It's it's like a big stuffed toy mystery. But yesterday I noticed that there was some new ones up and I realised that I hadn't shown you any of them or told you about them. So since Jack was driving, I decided to, decided to film it for you and let you see. I just think it's hilarious. So watch this. Kevin the Carrot, Olaf, a hanging bear, a horse and another bear and an elf. If anybody is watching and from the area, can you please let us know if you know why there are stuffed toys in the trees. There's also a car that sometimes sits there with one on its roof, um, which is it's just bizarre. But do you know what? It makes me smile every time I go through there and I always look out for them as well. And that's how I noticed there was new ones yesterday. So I thought I would just show you. I think it's, it's quite... Whatever it's there for, it does make me smile and hopefully it makes other people smile as well. So yeah, I just wanted to tell you about that. Right, so it's 25 to 11. That is me just getting around to breaking my fast with my coffee. Um, because I was taking advantage of the internet working and having a wee shot of my cricket. Now, remember I personalised Will and Clyde running jackets. I put their names up on the top cord, uh, top collar bit there. But I decided I was going to personalise Molly's because that came through later. And that's what I've just done. But instead of putting it up at the collar, I decided to put it at the bottom. So there we go. We've got Molly's name on her dog jacket now. And I, it went on much better using my my new gadget, the Easy Press, this was the, the machine that cost £140 that I said I had decided to order. So that's it there, and it just works like a big iron. You just set it to the right temperature, sit it on top of the, the vinyl, and voila, you have a personalised item. So that's <coughs> what I have been doing. So I'm going to sit here now, have my coffee, and try to catch up on some <coughs> YouTube while the internet's working. I don't know if you can hear the hoover, but Abby's hoover in her room. So I've got more chance of watching the internet while she's doing that and not online. <laughs> well, that didn't last long, did it? I got that far into my coffee and this happened. That is my hub gone orange again. Ah! <laughs> I meant to say when I was showing you Molly's little jacket, I have filmed a tutorial when I was making that, so if anybody wants to know how I made it, um, I will put a link into the video that will be going up on my craft channel. So if anybody wants to know how you make something like that with a cricket, then you can head over there and watch it. <coughs> what is all the barking about? Molly, tell them quiet. Tell them. <coughs> Good girl. Tell Molly, tell them. <coughs> Molly, tell them. <coughs> yeah. Molly, tell them. Oh. <coughs> yeah. Good girl. Yeah. You tell them. Oh, you tell them too. when she was tidy in her room. <laughs> Look at me because I can't see what they are. <laughs> They're so cool. Do you want me to put them away for next year? <laughs> what, are you going to keep them and wear them? Yeah. <laughs> I don't care, it's not Christmas. Yeah, you're quite right. I don't blame you. I would wear them all year too. I think they're very fetching. I love the bling. <laughs> I could use them for my craft. No. <laughs> How's Zana doing? You've not spoke about Zana on vlogs for ages. Right now she's sitting being fat on her hammock. She's sitting being fat on her hammock. <laughs> you said that she's filling out, eh? She's getting quite podgy. 
<laughs> this is the octopus that I was telling you about Ranner wants it. Look, get me. I want to play with it. So, this is the happy octopus. This is when Abby can be spoken to and when she's in a good mood. And when she wants you to stay away, that's what it is. It is actually very cute. When she first spoke about it, I'm like, that's ridiculous. But what was it? Fourteen ninety nine, fourteen pounds, something like it's that. It's usually like twenty something. Yeah, but it was reduced, wasn't it? I'll try and get the the link to the site and put that, it in the description. We got free shipping in a couple of days. That's right. It, it only took a couple of days and it was free. So it is actually very cute. I take it it was a couple of days because it said next day, but Corona and stuff. Yeah. It is beautiful. So you're in a good mood today then, are you? What happens when you're in an in-between mood? <laughs> Rana, it isn't a dog toy. Sorry, son. He was standing at the edge of my bed just staring at him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's not a doggy toy. Even Molly hasn't destroyed it yet. You've cuddled it, haven't you? Yeah, if Molly cuddles it. It's very cute. Here's Zana. You've not seen her for ages yet. Here's Zana on the hammock that she got for Christmas. Ooh. She is getting big though. Look where her tail is and her head. My goodness, you're huge. You're a huge girl. Brooke has tidied her room. So everything up there is tidy. Everything there, everything there. Well, I just knocked her unicorn picture over and decapitated her unicorn. It was uh, perler beads. <laughs> Well, that frame will get recycled, won't it? We'll put something else in it. She's made her bed. It's looking beautiful. That's she has even tidied up the bits under her bed. And down there where there was all loads of junk accumulating. So yes, very impressed. Well done. Hopefully Dad will be too. And it's going to stay like this, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because what's going to happen if not? Zana. Zana's going to get rehomed because one of the stipulations of her getting Zana was that she was going to keep her room tidy. Hey big girl, and we love you, we don't want you to go away. No. Right girls, we're going to make the Nutella cookies. Yes. No idea what they'll be like, but according to Annie Donna, they're good and they're easy. So, we want two tablespoons of plain flour. Right yep, perfect. One, ha ha. Right. Never watch so Sesame Street. Perfect. No. Yeah. I look so pasty. Two. Ah, ah, ah. Oh. Yeah, Abby's just scrubbed all her tan off. <laughs> I'm not allowed to do it again. No, not for a good few days. Right, perfect. <laughs> it looks like it, it looks like, yeah. <laughs> right, Abby, one tablespoon of Nutella. We're only just going to have enough. You're going to have to just scrape it all out as much as you can. Just scrape it out. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Right, now it says we have to add a little bit of milk at a time until it goes to a cookie dough consistency. Just a little bit at a time. A bit more than that. Right, give it a stir. Abby's going to add a little bit more milk. Okay, right, Brooke, give it a good stir. So yeah, the ratio is meant to be two tablespoons of flour to one tablespoon of Nutella. Um, but we we okay. were a wee bit liberal with the milk, so we've just added more flour to try it's and It's not quite it cookie dough, but... It's not wet cookie dough, but let's give it a go and see what happens. So take a plate out. You might be able to get, what, four out of it, maybe? Right. How long did they make One minute. Only one. Apparently. Although we've got a bit more mixture, so it might take a wee bit longer Wouldn't than that. Wouldn't it be self frozen flour? No, it's plain. They're not meant to rise. It's cookies, not cakes. Right, so they go in the microwave for one minute. Apparently. I'm feeling a bit sceptical. <laughs> what do you think, girls? No. <laughs> oh, well, nothing lost. Nothing ventured, nothing gained and all that. Right, Brit, come and see how they are. How's they looking? They need to be left for a wee minute before you 
lift them, but they look like cookies. I think we make another 15. Yeah, they're really soft. Are they? Yeah. I would maybe leave them for another 30 seconds because they do harden mm -hmm. as they sit. And then, oh, they smell okay. No way. They're a wee bit soft still. I would maybe go 15 seconds and see how they go. Right, that was another 15 seconds. Let's see how they do. So too soft. Are they? Mm -hmm. Right, give it another 15. It still looks more cakey than cookie, but Abby's going to be brave and try a bit. No, not nice. No. It's so dry. Can't taste the devil. Really? Uh, right, do you want to try it? What's soggy bottom? A soggy bottom? Okay, Prue. It just shoves it all in. Does it taste like a cookie? I'm just eating them because they taste a bit like cake. They're just tasting so. Does it taste like Nutella? Not really. Not really? Does it taste like cake? A wee bit. Oh, hold on a wee bit. Nah, I don't like that. That is very dry, isn't it? Nothing like a cookie, it's just like a very dry cake without much taste. Maybe with a bit of icing or something on top it'd be okay, but I think that was a bit of a fail, girls, but we gave it a go. And at the end of the day, that's all we need. <laughs> it's just five past four, the puppies have been fed, the roast beef is in the oven. I have never made a roast beef before in my life, so we're going to find out how this works out. Yes, you know what my cooking skills are like, especially this weekend, between the burnt sweet potato fries with the Nando's last night, and then those blooming Nutella cookie things today. I just hope that the roast beef turns out okay. <laughs> and to go with it, we've got some roast potatoes there that are ready to go in the oven. Again from Asta, because last week's homemade ones weren't great. I have made my own honey parsnips this week, though. I've just chopped up some parsnip and added honey. I'll add some oil when I'm putting it in the oven. I've got some potato croquettes and Yorkshire pudding. So I think I've got all my timings worked out, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> right, 25 past five, dinner is ready. So I have got a couple of slices of roast beef, some honey roasted parsnips, a couple of roast potatoes, a couple of potato croquettes and a Yorkshire pudding. And over it, I have got some of this it has that extra special gluten-free beef and red wine gravy. Abby's got the same as me. Jack has got the same, but he's got more potatoes and parsnips and beef and no Yorkshire puddings because he doesn't like them. And he can add his own gravy later on. I don't know if he's going to have it tonight after work or if he's going to take it to work tomorrow for his lunch. So, yeah, that's that. So, I hope you have enjoyed this vlog. I'm going to head off now. I'm going to eat my dinner and then chill out watching Dancing on Ice until Jack comes in. And, uh, yeah, that'll be that. I can relax knowing there's no homeschooling for a whole week and a day. It's a week on Tuesday they go back because the Monday's an in-service day. Girls! Are you looking forward to your half-term break? Yeah. Yeah. I just hope the internet behaves for them. <laughs> right, thanks so much for watching everybody. If you've enjoyed this, please hit the thumbs up button and I will see you in our next video. Don't forget to comment below. See you later. Bye!